With 184 hours on the clock on this tractor, I want to do a little update. I've had it for about 20 months. And yeah, so I figured I'd give a little update on what's going on with the tractor, how it's been working for me, if I've had any problems. Just want to remind you, it's a T4.95 New Holland. It does have the cab with the Vision View Deluxe. So you got the upper panel up there that allows you to see when you have the loader raised up. That panel also goes up like a moonroof, if you will, or lets some air in. But uh, ordered this tractor. It does have the R34 radial tires, which I do really enjoy having radial tires. Provides a bit of a flatter profile in the agricultural tractor tires versus a bias ply. And as you see, I do have the wheel weights on the tractor. So why don't we go through a couple of the things that were kind of nuisances on the tractor. To start with, um, when I first purchased the tractor, this is your differential lock. So you can lock the two rear wheels together. That essentially you step on that. It operates a linkage down underneath the tractor. And when I went to use it the first time with you know less than 10 hours on the tractor, uh, the, that linkage wouldn't work. Turns out there was paint and a little bit of corrosion on a pin that went in the transmission. It took me 25 minutes to find that pin and uh, work it a little bit, put some uh, lubricant on it. Haven't had a problem since, but you know it was something that wasn't working when I first got the tractor and I was able to resolve that myself. Um, second thing, you can see you got your grab handle here and you've got your light and that's mounted to a bracket. You can kind of see I've taped this plastic cover here um, can fall off. It's got little clips to snap over the front piece that won't fall off because it's bolted through. Uh, but this uh, back piece fell off. I would lost that so my dealer replaced that without issue. But I just looked at it when I snapped it on and I looked at the other side and said, you know what, I'm going to put some tape around that make sure that they stay on there. It's no big deal if the cover comes off. Uh, it just exposes the screw heads or the bolt heads. But when you go to grab into the tractor, if you grab a hold of it or accidentally hit it, this is at least smooth. You know, you got smooth plastic. The other way, you've got like kind of exposed sharp edges. So that was kind of a nuisance as well. Um, one thing I did have happen was I was getting a little bit of blow-by or crankcase pressure. Uh, it wasn't blow-by, but crankcase pressure that was exhibiting itself with um, some oil actually uh, spitting out towards the dipstick, the fill tube. And it turns out New Holland, uh, when they paint the engine, there's this little plug, I mean it's very small on the other side of the engine, uh, must be like a crankcase breather or whatnot. But there's this little plastic plug in there and they just needed to pull that out. It had black paint on one side and clean on the other and that uh, resolved that issue had this bracket here which holds all the hydraulic hoses uh, the bolts backed out I lost one so I had to buy a new bolt tighten that all back up haven't had a problem since that was with like 20 hours on the tractor probably the most significant thing I dealt with was I lost the rear tire it actually uh, I'll show you here all these bolts all of them except for one backed out and fell out and uh, the one that was left backed out and allowed the wheel to come off and come off the hub of the tractor. So this is the wheel, that's the hub. And, you know, it could have been a nightmare because luckily I was going slow. I was just out back in the field coming towards the house with the brush hog and felt the tractor kind of shift. And it turns out it, you know, the wheel kind of shifted up. Uh, if you were going fast, that would have been a catastrophe because A, the wheel could have just fallen off if that last bolt would have broken or stripped out and, uh, you know, could have ripped the fender off, could have, you know, potentially rolled the tractor, I guess, if you're going super fast and didn't have uh, control. But luckily it was not a huge deal. Dealer gave me all new bolts. I had to chase one thread. I torqued them on and they've not loosened up. So I don't know whether it was just from the factory or whether there was some lubricant on them or what, but... We got that resolved. So everything else has been good. Um, you know, uh, it's you know, 
Got a nice filter there, that's easy to get at. The engine oil filter, however, is located behind this panel. That's not the problem, it's just the fact that there's a bracket in the way once you get behind here. Um, so if you want to change the oil, and the engine oil, and you're probably best doing that when you change the fuel filters. This has a 600 hour interval on the engine oil, but I don't put many hours on it, so I like to change it annually. Uh, so what I'm going to do is drop the fuel filters, which are located behind this panel as well, pull those off, pull the engine oil filter, put the engine, new engine oil filter on, then fill up the new uh, fuel filters. You do want to fill them up. It won't prime itself uh, with that kind of volume being required. Put them on and you'll be in a lot better shape. That was something that New Holland could have done a better job with. So, some things that are working out well. Well, the rest of the tractor. It's, it's been a great tractor for me. Um, I do use uh, a rear remote circuit to run this plow, the hydraulic angle on it. Uh, so, I'm running that off the rear remote. If I, you know, had been able to buy a tractor the, that actually had the loader control with that third remote option on it, I would have, but uh, there wasn't one out there. So I might look at that in the future. Uh, I believe it'd probably be a fairly expensive upgrade. This is electric over hydraulic if you do it. Um, but it might be something I look at in the future. So this does have an emissions package on it. So it's got a diesel particulate filter. And depending on what I'm doing with it, if it's idling a lot, I'm not putting a lot of stress on the engine, it tends to go into a regeneration a little more often. I can't even tell you how many hours it is that goes between regenerations. I mean, I was brush hogging for, you know, weekend after weekend and it never went into one. Um, I started doing some idling and it did. So, but it's fairly unobtrusive. You do know the exhaust gets warm. Um, but it is nice because the tractor doesn't smoke. Uh, that's one of the benefits of a diesel particulate filter. This does not have selective catalytic reduction. Um, so there's no diesel exhaust fluid that gets put into it. Uh, that was on the next uh, model year out. Another improvement I may make. You can see kind of that up right there. And that up right there. Um, I would like to put a little bit of a grill across the front just in case I ever have a stick come up uh, sometimes when I'm brush hogging a trail or mowing a trail you get some sticks and I really don't want to drive anything through the radiator loader has been very powerful I've got the mechanical self-leveling it has 3600 plus pounds of uh, lift capacity you know 36 inches or I forget how far in front of the pins um, I do have the quick attach system here so you can see I fabricated this plate up for use with my snow plow. I've never taken the loader off. They say it's fairly easy but I think you'd want to make sure everything's on a level surface. You can see kind of the parking stands for the loader. I have changed the hydraulic oil, engine oil, um, the transmission filter, uh, fuel filters. So I would recommend if you're going to do a lot of loader work to get the rear weights. I don't have loaded back tires. Uh, I've got those rear weights there. I think it's an extra 400 pounds on the rear. And you'll want it. Uh, it's a very strong loader with the stock bucket. Uh, you can feel like you can put enough in that bucket, it'll lift it, but you'll feel like, oh, it's a little bit light on the rear. A lot of times I'll have my, my York rake or some other implement. I have a six foot three point uh, tiller, put that on there and it's no problem. But uh, just so you know, if you get it without the weights and don't have the rear tires filled, you'll feel like it's a little light on the rear end when you lift a lot of weight in the front bucket. Oh, one other small issue I had. These are the pumps for the uh, uh, window cleaner. One for the front, one for the rear. And I had one that uh, stopped working. I looked at it, saw that it had, it had a little bit of moisture in it. I cleaned it out, it worked again. 
Um, it stopped working. It got a little intermittent, so they replaced that under warranty. I enjoy having the flexible three-point link arms on the bottom, so you can push this in, pull this out, and that way you can actually uh, get close, you know, with your three-point implement, and then do the fine adjustment uh, by adjusting that out with the adjustable link arms. Another improvement I made, you can see these pins right here. Pull that out and that allows you to swing your arm in and out. But I put it on a tether, a chain. And the reason I did that was because I have a tendency of losing them. Uh, you know, you get a little bit of brush that lifts it up when you're driving in taller brush. Um, the other is it just makes it easier. You don't have to, you know, drop it on the ground or set it somewhere. You just pop it out, get everything lined up, and pop it back in. Got that tethering process there. The top link, I do take this on and off a uh, fair amount of times when I'm using my three-point uh, backhoe. I have a Woods 1050. It's like a 10 and a half, 11 foot dig backhoe that's three-point hitch mount. So I do use that from time to time. And it has its own uh, PTO pump, so you just slide that on the shaft there. And I removed, there's a, another cover that goes over this. I removed that just so I had ease of getting that pump in and out of there. Something that easily falls out are the pins that go, I'm sorry, pins that go right in here. So I just have some bolts in there. So when I have my draw bar in there, it just keeps it centered. Um, but I need to find some bigger ones for that. Got a great lighting package. Very happy with that. When I am plowing snow, if I go out on the road to back up or whatever, I got it lit up like a Christmas tree. I do not want to have someone saying they didn't see me, but it's got great lighting, great vision out of the cab, lots of glass. The doors seal very well. Of course, you got your little toolbox there, and I just have an assortment of pins and things of that nature. Just a reminder on the cab, got the buddy seat, which is very convenient for when I have my children with me, one of my kids. It's very quiet inside the cab. All of the HVAC is located in the front panel, but it's got a, a lot of these vents so you can steer them wherever you want and direct the airflow. It does have the power reverser, um, so you don't need to clutch. But a lot of times I do, it's just a habit of mine when you want to go between forward and reverse. Everything's very ergonomic, located right off to your right for all the controls. Um, you can see your four-wheel drive, heat and air conditioning, lighting, um, and windshield washer and windshield wiper controls, and then your radio located up above there. Seat's very comfortable, and you know, you got the armrest, you can kick them up or down. Plus, it's an air ride seat, so push that button right there. Little air pump pumps the seat up. You can adjust your height to wherever you'd like. It also, um, this is kind of nice, shifts I think 15 degrees off to the side. So if you're running an implement, sometimes you like to be turning your head, looking out back, and so you don't have to turn your head quite so much if you're already seated a little bit at an angle. This does have the 540E, so economy. So it's got a, basically a two-speed PTO. Uh, when I'm not in economy mode, it puts it at a higher horsepower and higher engine RPM range to get 540 out of the PTO. I run it in economy mode 90% of the time. Uh, it's sufficient for you know mowing through normal grass and you know stuff up to 18 inches tall or when I'm running my PTO generator, or even my three-point tiller. And it saves fuel. I do track my fuel consumption in hours, and when I'm doing light mowing, or things of that nature, it's about a gallon an hour. If I'm in heavy, thick stuff, going a little bit slower, you know, running a little bit harder, uh, it goes up over a gallon an hour. But uh, I'm very happy with the fuel performance. I mean, so this is a powerful tractor. It's like 98 engine horsepower and um, 82 or 84. 80, I think it's 82 on the PTO. I like it that it's taller, sits up a bit, 
gives you good vision. We'll probably need to go back in here. I want to show you this. So a nice feature of this tractor is you can see the hood is sloped and you can see right in front of the the tractor. Uh, I can see my plow, I can see what's going on when I have the bucket on, I can see what's going on. You know, lean forward just a whisker and you can really see. So they've done a nice job of sloping that hood. I do have the mechanical self-leveling and with that, you know, it keeps the bottom of the bucket parallel to, or, you know, in whatever position all the way as you raise it. I would say the timing's a little bit off, but it's not enough to be, you know, of consequence for what I do. I run forks, I've got this plow, and I have my bucket, so I've got some good implements for the front or, you know, uh, attachments for the front. Got good mirrors on the side, and they have this bar here for mounting various things, which I've not used any of that. Of course, you got your throttle set position if you're, you know, doing something where it's going to just run and be at the same PTO setting. You got your range selector, gear selector, loader control, rear remotes, PTO engagement. This is kind of nice. There's a pedal down there which allows you to shift the steering column to wherever it's comfortable or if you need. You know, you want it up so that you can get out, and you want to pull it down so it's closer to you. Like I said, lots of glass. So visibility is very good. No water comes in the cab. Seals are great. This is kind of the feature of when you've got your loader going up. Normally with a cab tractor you can't see it up there, but now because they've given you this high-vis panel, uh, you can see it. So if you're looking at this series of tractor, uh, I've given you some things to look out for. So make sure the wheels are torqued on tight. Um, you know, make sure the bolts are tight. That's something that in general, it just seems like in shipping things can come loose and just check it out real well before you get it home my dealer's been great to work with very happy there but uh, i should get a lot of years of use out of this tractor it sits in a garage i keep it washed and waxed and when i use it i use it and then i like to maintain it keep it in good shape as i said i change oil every year at least which is well uh in advance of their 600 hour service interval but you know, it's like an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I'd rather, you know, I'd rather spend a little money on that and know that it's going to last me a long time. It should last my lifetime. So hopefully this helps you out. Thank you very much.